Hi, this is a quick video about um, gold versus carbon electrodes. So at ZP we're often asked, um, can we use a gold electrode in our assay or can you recommend a gold electrode? And we often recommend our value gold 303 electrodes. Um, now I am off, when we're asked about gold electrodes, 90% of the time people are really trying to make a immunoassay on top of the um, gold or they're trying to make a molecular assay on top of the gold. So in the case of an immunoassay, they might be um, putting what we call a thiol linker onto the surface of the gold, um, activating the other end of the molecule, and then coupling something like an antibody um, or a single strand of DNA um, to the molecule. Now you can achieve the same also with carbon. And in the past, we would not have suggested um, necessarily carbon over gold, but as the price of gold is going up and can sometimes be quite volatile. Um, I actually suggest it's better to, you know, even at an R and D stage now, start thinking about using carbon um, as opposed to gold. And I'll sort of discuss that through um, now. So 90% of the time, the reason people ask for gold electrodes is really because of molecular assays or amino assays. And you can definitely use carbon in the place of gold um, in that case. And um, we will discuss that. Sometimes people need to use gold because actually they want to detect a molecule like hydrogen peroxide um, and maybe the carbon is not very catalytic towards its electrochemical oxidation, for example. But in that case, actually, you know, you can use a carbon electrode that's mediated and we have, you know, quite a few of these mediated carbon electrodes. And so in the case of um, hydrogen peroxide, for example, um, you could use a Prussian blue um, electrode there and that would um, detect or be used to catalyze um, the oxidation of hydrogen peroxide as an example. So you don't necessarily need to use gold if you're doing an immunoassay or molecular assay and you don't necessarily need to use gold um, because of its um, catalytic properties. Um, you can use a mediated carbon in the in the latter case. Um, now with the gold electrodes, you know, the kind of process that's going on here is, you know, somebody has a gold electrode, you know, they put a sort of thiol molecule onto it, sort of using self-assembled mo uh, monolayer type um, chemistry. Um, then they will activate the other end of this molecule, in this case, the carboxylic acid. Um, they use e uh, EDC NHS coupling. They put an antibody onto that, for example, through an amide bond. And at this point, they're getting pretty close to making, in this case, an immunosensor. But if they didn't use an antibody here, they use DNA, then they could be making a sort of molecular um, assay. Um, and then they can block the surface with BSA, bovine serum, albumin. Um, so there's quite a standard workflow from turning a gold electrode into, in this case, an immunoassay, or it could have as easily been a molecular assay. Um, and at ZP, we do do this. So we take our gold value electrode, we turn it into an anti, sorry, into an immunosensor, and we test it as a concentration of, in this case, antigen, and we get a nice strong signal. And we're doing it by um, impedance spectroscopy. Um, we like that. We'll talk about, I'll just mention that impedance spectroscopy is quite good for this. Differential pulse voltammetry is quite good. Square wave voltammetry is good for this kind of um, work as well. Um, now, I would suggest that if you are making a immunosensor or a molecular assay sensor, actually try out carbon. I think it's lower cost and it works just as, not just as well, but it works pretty well. Um, so we've got a paper out there um, for the, and we use a sort of generic system for the detection of um, HCG. And in that paper, what's happening is we're taking the um, carbon electrodes of one of our hypervalue electrodes. These hypervalue electrodes we sell a sheet of them. Um, at the time of making this video, we're selling a sheet of them for um, 145 euros. So that means that these electrodes are less than 50 cents each. Um, so they're pretty low cost. The reagent we're using is this kind of pyrene NHS molecule. Um, and it's kind of nice because it's already, um, the pyrene group will bond quite well to the carbon surface. It's probably pi pi stacking, the carbon's full of let's say um, pi orbitals, the um, pyrene group is full of pi orbitals and these two things, you know, probably stick together really well. I um, mean, it's already NHS activated. So then after that, then you can add the antibody and it'll essentially just bind it to the surface. 
you might then want to add a black a blocking um, layer and that's mentioned in the paper and we follow each step by site voltammetry and you can essentially do the same but what it's saying is you didn't have to if you're making an immunoassay or trying to make a um, molecular assay you didn't have to use the self-assemble monolayer I think self-assemble monolayers have easily been over, around for over 20 years now so it's sort of you know it's good science let's say and you know robust science but there are definitely other ways of doing it and with the price of gold spiraling i would definitely suggest you don't build upon gold because the gold, the price can also fluctuate as well which makes it harder when you're trying to commercialize it and have you know fixed pricing or and to have a volatile material in your supply chain is not fun it can sometimes work in your favor but often it works against you and eats up your margin um so in terms of carbon then we in this particular case we tested by differential pulse voltammetry it worked perfectly um well to get these kind of immunoassays or molecular assays to work just making the sensor and doing the electrochemistry will take you something like 111 hours so just know you know it's not day one that you you, you get necessarily get the results um so when we ask the question you know what gold electrode can you recommend we can recommend our gold 303 electrode but I would strongly suggest that people also have a look at the carbon electrode because um, realistically the price of gold is high. Will it drop? Yeah, it'll drop, but I think it always, it, basically the trend will always be upwards and it will also be a variable as well. And that's difficult when you're generally trying to commercialize, um, let's say, an electrode. So thank you for watching this short video. If you've got any questions with Zimmer Peacock, um, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Okay, thanks very much.